All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakar Kwadash. Double honors to the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone. And Shalawam to the elected nation of Israel. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about how cries unto the Lord sound like complaints and moaning and whinging to the people in the world. And it's, tr it's a true statement because when you go around complaining about the wickedness and the evil that you see in this world, what people view you as is somebody that's just moaning and complaining and like can't get by in life and, and can't can't find any type of success and doesn't have any talent. So therefore you just complain and whinge. That's what people view crying and complaints unto the Lord as in this world. But really, that's just a person that's enlightened and sickened by the evil that they're seeing. So they can't find any complaint complacency in this world and they are a person that just um is 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 awoke and and on and under sleep like the rest of the people that are not complaining. This is Exodus chapter three and verse seven. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. But if you're not complaining and you're not moaning, it's going to seem as though you ain't got any sorrows. But the Israelites, when we was in Egypt, we were complaining about the things that we was going through. And Yahweh was looking and seeking for people that are complaining. He's looking and seeking for people that are sighing and crying for the abominations that go on in the world. And even though there might be a time where we seem to be winning ultimately you can't win in this place it's not possible to win in a righteous in in a wicked place if you're trying to be righteous because it's designed to make wicked win the wicked win ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4 and the lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof and to the others he said in mine hearing go ye after them through the city and smite let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near upon any man. So like but come not near any, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. So verse four is letting you know that marks are going to be set, and this is talking about spiritual marks being set upon the foreheads of men that sigh and that cry. For the abominations, men that are, as it, as the world would view it, moaning. Men that are whinging. For example, what are some of the things you might complain about in this world? Oh, the um, the, the, the so-called white man is the devil. You might say that and then people will say, oh, you're just blaming. You're just blaming slavery for all your problems. Oh, you're just blaming slavery for all your problems. You, you, you just, you're just, you're just going to say, oh, I'm blaming the man. I'm blaming the man this, I'm blaming the man that. As if, as if people don't realise that there is a blockage it's not possible in this world for you as an israelite to get exactly the same things as what edomite is and if you if you believe that there is the possibility to do that well then you're delusional because how many israelites are billionaires by by industries in this society israelites are only billionaires by um by being entertainers and even then they're not allowed to have a voice and they have to be some squeaky church mouse and can't say a damn thing because they get cancelled man whereas the other the, the elites the elites of Esau that are billionaires they can say and do whatever they want they can do do go around and do loads of things but yeah how is setting marks upon people that have got complaints with how this world is that's how you get marked that's how you get come to the truth because you were sighing and crying so yeah how wakes you up to re to realize okay this this place this place is you're right this place is wrong and i'm going to show you what the truth is let me get another scripture this is haggai chapter one and starting from verse three then came the word of the lord to haggai the prophet saying is it time for you O ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste now therefore thus saith the lord of hosts consider your way so if you're not complaining about this world that means that you think that there's nothing wrong with it and if you if you if you've got if you can see that something's wrong with this world and you ain't got a voice and you're not voicing any opinions on it, well then that means that you're a zombie and that you're basically a slave. And the scriptures talk about that. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homemade slave? And he's not Israelites are not supposed to be. But in this time right now, they are, man. They they are slaves. They are homemade slaves. Verse six, you have so much and bring in little, you eat, 
but you have not enough. So no matter how many, all these Israelites that talk about this um, working hard stuff, no matter how hard you work as an Israelite in this society, it's always going to flop, man. Yahweh's always going to, at the end of it, cause it to flop because we're under curses and he doesn't want us to <coughs> succeed in this world. He doesn't want us to, man. Is There's never enough in this world. All, all these Israelites that are making out all this money, there's always seems to be something missing from their life. <coughs> so look here. Um, let me back verse six again. You have so much and bring in little. You eat. So look here, you have so much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. So you might, as this world says, get the bag. But now there's going to be more. There's going to be more things that, that, that you need to do with that bag. So eventually, so, so there's not going to be no no um, abundance of wealth. You're still going to just be chasing your tail. Because now that you've got more money, you might get a more expensive car. And you're just going to have to keep pouring money into that. You might live in a more a more um, nicer neighbourhood. So that means that your rent's gone up. So now you're going to have to keep pouring money into that. Then when, you, when your more expensive car gets damages, it's a bigger cost. When you're nice, when you're nicer house that you're living in, the bills are going to be higher. It's going to be more expensive to run a bigger, to, to um, pay for the bills on a bigger house. You're going to, you're going to be in a neighbourhood where people might steal your nicer things. People might steal those nice things that you have. So there's always going to be some expense that causes it to be a bag filled with holes, man. There's never going to be enough because Yahweh has not made it in that way for us in this society. And people can say that they have. People can believe that they've got it if they want to. They can believe that their way is the right way, but they're gonna, we're going to see. Verse 7, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So consider, is the way that you're living the right way, man? And the answer to that is no. This isn't this isn't what it is, man. Walking around or going into the shop <coughs> with a mask on. That's not what it's about. You gotta wear a mask to go into the shop. You gotta you gotta have a um a passport to prove that you're not diseased off. That's not what it's about, man. Um first Thessalonians chapter five and verse three. For when they shall say peace and in fact verse two. For yourself, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as to veil upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. So when people start getting safe, thinking they're safe in this world, when everyone starts thinking that it's safe and they think, okay, we've finally, we've finally made it. We're, we're how it's supposed to be, how things are supposed to be. That's when the destruction is going to come. When these elites start thinking, okay, now we finally got our plans coming to fruition. That's when all hell's going to break loose on them. That's when Yahweh is going to cause them to be destroyed. Verse 4, but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief because we are complaining about this world. We got a problem with alphabet people. We got a problem with women and how they're evil these days. We got a problem with with um giving injecting poison into ourselves. We got a problem with children being kidnapped. We got a problem with um with with the bad diets that people have. We got a problem with the way how people's health is considered nothing in this world. We got a problem with this place. And anyone that's righteous should have a problem with this place. You shouldn't be accepting that this is what it's about. You should be complaining about this world. Because you should, through reading the scriptures, understand that the world's supposed to be a lot better than this. But to the world, and even people that might stumble upon this video, they might have already clicked off. Oh, he's complaining, man. He's whinging. Oh, what are you going to do about it? Well, the whole thing about it is to complain. To sigh and cry. To cry into Yahweh. For him to come back and take this take these people down. And that comes through being sealed, man. It comes through being awoken to this, this world not being right. To hearing the truth. And the truth comes through other men, other men's sighs and cries about how wicked this world is. This is Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. In whom ye trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye, that ye believed, ye were sealed 
with that Holy Spirit from it. So we're going to hear people sighing and crying about this world. This is evil. That is evil. This is evil. That is evil. This ain't what it's supposed to be. That ain't what it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to do this. We're not supposed to do that. You are supposed to do this according to Yahweh's law. You are supposed to do that according to Yahweh's law. Right? And through that, that's going to make people be sealed. And people, that, let me let me get this scripture, man, because I love this chapter, man. I love this chapter. Let me let me go to these these couple of verses. I love these verses. This is Wisdom of Salem, chapter 12, verse 17. For a men shall not believe that, that for a men will not believe that thou art full of power, thou showest thy strength. And among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest, which people would have, would have just considered that boldness and, and as moaning and whinging and stuff like that. Now, oh, he's so confident, but all he's doing is just moaning, he ain't doing nothing about it. He says that he says that the that the um that they're the Edomites, that these people are the Edomites, but he ain't doing nothing about it though. He's a coward, he's scared. That's what people that's what people say in their mind. That's what they think. <coughs> but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We use the word of the Lord to condemn this place. And the word of the Lord is complaining about how this world is evil. This is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labours. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for because they was just viewing it as complaining. <coughs> verse 3 and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach we fools account his life madness and his end to be without honour oh he's just complaining all the time oh he's complaining about women but that's just because he ain't got no game he needs to step his step his weight up he needs to be a um, what, what's, what's this new thing man he's just complaining because he's not a high value man that's why he's complaining about women. That's how people think when they hear men complaining about women, how, how women are um, in this world, basically, now these days, how they're harlots and how they're delusional, how they're proud, how they want to claim to be equal with men, but secretly they just want to have the benefit over men entirely. But then at the same time, they want to be looked after like a woman that's, like a woman that's meek and humble, which is ridiculous and never going to happen, by the way. That's never going to be achieved in this world. Verse 5, not not successfully. The relationship paths in this world are delusional. And that's why everyone's stumbling over themselves. And that's why you've got all these women out there seeking for higher value men. Because Yahweh said he was going to make a man more precious than fine gold. And he's doing it right now these days because these women are complaining. They can't find a man that cares about them these days. They can't find it because they're delusional and they're wicked and evil and the men don't want to deal with that. Verse 5, how is he among them among the children of God and his lot among the saints? Because they would have thought, this guy is always just complaining, man. Oh, every single time, no matter what, this is how these people think. Oh, he's always, so lucky, he's always talking that Bible stuff. He would be a cool dude if it wasn't for that Bible stuff all the time. Why is he always so negative? Or why is he always so angry all the time? Oh, why doesn't he ever want to do anything? Why isn't he why isn't he zombied off like us? Verse 6. Therefore have we err from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness will not shine unto us, and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We weird ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction, yea. We have gone through deserts where they lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. They didn't know the way of the Lord. They was went they, when they was hearing the complaining, the sighing and the crying for all the abominations that we done in the midst thereof, they was like, just thinking, shut up. That's how they were viewing it. They was thinking, shut your mouth. Forget what you're talking about. You just ain't successful. You're just you're just making excuses for the reason why you ain't sex successful. You're a hater. But when they're, when they're all um, tagged up and bagged up with, with um, potions and stuff in their body that they've been given by Esau, what are they going to be saying then? when they realised that they, their life was the joke. Verse 8, what have pride profit with us? Or what good have our riches with our vaunting brought us? What was the point of me chasing a bag? That's what they're going to be saying. What's this bag worth now? What's all this money that I was chasing after worth? I may as well have considered my ways because I was eating and I had not enough, but I didn't realise that. I thought that I had, that's what they're going to realise. I thought I had it together, but I didn't. 
verse 9, all those things are passed away at, like a shadow and as a post that hasted by, because once the famine start, it's not going to matter how much money somebody has, because you're not going to be able to buy no food anyway, because it's not going to be there. It's not going to matter how much money you have to buy food when there's not a lot of food anyway. And it's not going to matter how much money you have to buy food when people are not buying food no more. They're stealing it. It's not going to matter then when all when when everyone goes to their real evil nature. Verse 10. In fact, I ain't gonna, now I'm not going to go to that verse. I'm going to jump straight to verse 13. Even so, we in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end. I had no virtue. And had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness. They was consumed in their way, so that they couldn't even look to the left or to the right and see that things were not were not right. And I think I'll end this lesson there. I just thought I'd make this video on um how sighing and crying to the Lord is viewed as complaining and whinging and moaning to people in the world. Shalom to the elect nation of Israel. Shalom.